Assalamualaikum everybody. All right. So today we are going to talk about. Oh wow, you guys are audible. Okay, I'm not unmuting you guys. Okay, um, but if anybody would obviously you know be loud enough, so I will not upload this on YouTube. Okay, so it's up to you guys if you want to uh, you know get it uploaded or not. Okay, all right. Okay, guys. Uh, you can interact if you want. However, I would appreciate that you guys keep on sending me your questions in the chat box. All right, because that gives me some time to answer if I want to have some time. All right. Okay. So let's start. Uh, today we are going to talk about local anesthetic, and I think uh, when we look at the background, we all can relate because I'm sure we all went through uh, this uh, scary moment when we went to the dentist and uh, the dentist literally looked into our eyes to obviously spot the teeth, the, uh, teeth that was not in a good uh, position and a, in a good condition. So, uh, you know, they would have to extract it out or do some procedure on the teeth. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I get scared a lot. And especially this dentist uh, syringe I find it more scary than the normal syringe. I don't know why. Anyways, uh, okay. So local anesthesia, we have already talked about uh, general anesthesia. So I'm sure you all know about what is that, right? Okay, uh, can anybody here tell me why, why are we giving anesthesia? You can unmute yourself and talk. Okay, yeah guys, tell me, why are we giving anesthesia? Are you guys able to unmute yourself? I think you all can unmute yourself, right? Yeah, good. Okay, Jibete. Guys, are you able to unmute yourself or not? Okay, for a check. Yes, ma'am. Okay, good, good, good. All right. So, tell me, guys. Ma'am, to, uh, to depress the new one. Okay, great. To, because we want to depress the neuron, that is why uh, we are giving Thank anesthesia. Yeah, very good, very nice. And why exactly are we depressing the neurons? And why exactly are we depressing the neurons? What is our major target? Ma'am, to get rid of the pain we are going to have during the surgery of an operation. Okay, good. Sana has excitation, so uh, sodium channel or mm -hmm. jo calcium channel hote hain, unko depress kar dete hain. Or jo bar po, hyper polarization hota hai, usko enhance kar dete hain. Enhance or inhibit? CNS hyper polarization ko jo hai, jo GABA receptors hote hain, unki activity ko jo hai enhance kar dete hain. Awesome, awesome. Taake awesome. wo jo hai. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So you are exactly right on spot. Okay. That uh, our major target is that we are inhibiting the uh, neurons. Okay. We are inhibiting, uh, like we are inducing hyperpolarization and our major objective is so that, so that the pain is not felt. Right. Okay. When we were giving general anesthesia at that time, we used the terminology MAC, right? What was that? Minimum alveolar concentration. Good. And what was that about? Do you guys remember what is that about? Ma'am, is me jo hai hum drug ki jo hai potency or efficacy ko jo hai describe karte hain. Okay, but what exactly are you describing? That in MAC, you were looking that how much of the drug, minimum drug is needed in the alveoli, okay? So that, um, uh, you know, uh, it will produce um, the depressive action, okay? And that the incision pain is not felt, right? 
So that was our target, right? Okay. You see, guys, as you have already said, that here our target is to diminish pain, right? Yes, analgesia. Uh, we want to have analgesic effect, right? Now, why exactly we are calling it analgesia and uh, uh, anesthetic and non analgesia? Because uh, here we already know that the pain is about to happen, right? And we are giving it prophylactically already so that the pain is not felt by the patient, right? However, let's say if I am walking and uh, let's say if I step on something, so obviously uh, it would be spontaneous, right? And uh, I would fe feel immense pain and maybe if the pain won't go away in a while, then I'll start taking analgesics, right? So here is a difference in that. So our major target is that we want to produce numbness, right? We want to numb a specific area. Here, when we were giving general anesthetic, at that moment, we were uh, making the entire brain go in the depressive state, right? However, when we are talking about local anesthesia, so here we want one specific organ only to get numb, all right, to feel no pain, all right, to, but how exactly we are not going to feel the pain when efferent neuron will not send us the stimulation, right? Uh, let's say whatever the dentist is doing in my mouth, right? What, uh, no matter how many teeth he's going to pull out, right? I'm not going to feel it if I have local anesthesia, right? So our major target is that we want a specific organ to get numb without getting a general anesthesia. And by the way, it is more, much more preferred that you give local anesthesia rather than general anesthesia, right? Uh, because when we are giving general anesthesia, then we are depressing the brain and we are depressing the entire body, right? However, when we are giving local anesthesia, then only a target organ is affected and not the entire body, right? So here is a difference. So guys, you know what? The first anesthetic uh, that was discovered locally was cocaine, okay? All right, so modes of administration, you will uh, very frequently hear that we give it intradermal, subcutaneous, and intrathecal. So these are the three ways of administration of local anesthesia, right? So intradermal, subcutaneous, and intrathecal, right? Pretty much, okay. The next thing is that these local anesthetics are weak bases. If you remember in your third semester, we studied about how exactly ionized drugs react and how exactly unionized drugs react. And if you remember, we studied that ionized drugs will, um, will take it hard to penetrate into the cell, right? However, the uh, unionized one will actually just penetrate, penetrate into the cell membrane and produce the effects, right? So our local anesthetics have this challenge, okay? That initially they should not uh, become ionized, all right? And later on they should become ionized. What exactly I'm saying? Let's talk about it here. Okay, because he, right now I just said that initially we don't want it to be ionized and afterwards I want it to be ionized, okay? So why exactly I want that to happen? Let's just say that this is a cell which is present in my mouth, okay? Or you can say this is a neuron, this is a nerve cell which was present in my mouth, okay? And I went to the dentist and the dentist has given me uh, a, a local anesthetic, okay? Now this local anesthetic, since it's not ionized, all right, it will cross the cell membrane and it will enter into the cell, right? As soon as it will enter into the cell, it will become ionized. Why exactly it will become ionized? Because we all know that within the cell, it's a lot negative, right? So automatically, our local anesthetic will become uh, ionized, right, guys? Okay, so when it's ionized, it cannot go back, right? So what it would do is, uh, if you remember, we know what is sodium ion, uh, sodium ion channels, right? So what this local anesthetic would do is it would go 
and bind here on the sodium channel and it will block the way of sodium ions from inside. It is very much important that you guys appreciate this concept that here uh, the local anesthetic is blocking the sodium channel from inside the cell and not from outside the cell. Uh, then why it causes allergic reaction in most patients as I have a serious cell. Okay, so now I would be discussing this point, okay, about the allergy thing, all right, in a while, okay? All right, so guys, I have written the description here as well, okay? I, uh, I hope if I miss something or you want to see the entire uh, explanation written, so I've already jotted down here as well. Okay, I hope it's clear to you guys that local anesthetic was unionized. It went inside the cell, it got ionized, it blocked the sodium ion channel from inside and stopped the entry of sodium ions inside, right? And that is why what will not be produced, action potential will not be produced. And when action potential is not produced, obviously the signals are not sent to the brain. And when signals are not sent to the brain, I won't feel pain at all, right? Okay, so guys, uh, local anesthetics provide regional anesthesia. Drugs come in two types. One is ester and other one is amide. Um, okay, I hope you all remember this high school concept that ester is this group. Like you have carbonyl group attached with oxygen. So this is like ester linkage, okay? And then you have amide group and in a mind group, you have carbonyl group, and then you have a mind group, okay? That, that makes up the amide linkage, right, guys? Okay, when you look at the examples of esters, okay, the drugs include procaine, cocaine, benzocaine, which are metabolized by plasma and tissue is traces. Now, guys, uh, the amides include lidocaine and then... Uh, uh, Bupivacaine and then mepivacaine, which metabolized by liver amidases. Now, they, here are two things which I want you to notice. The first thing is that in this spelling of ester, no matter what ester you pick up, there is only one I, right? There is only one I, okay? However, when you talk about amides, okay, they have two I's in it. Okay, so this is just one tip to memorize it. Okay, and I hope you guys are efficient enough that now you would develop some mnemonic to memorize it. Okay, I could not have time to develop a mnemonic for it. Okay, but I'm sure after class you all will do it on your own. Okay, all right. And this is exactly the same thing that we discussed. Okay, that how exactly it's getting ionized and how exactly it's uh, doing its action. Uh, for ester uh, uh, local anesthetics, you should remember that these are metabolized by plasma cholinase traces, okay? So, uh, and you should remember there are no cholinase traces in the cerebrospinal fluid, okay? And you should be careful that the cholinase traces are in abundant amount, okay? Because if it's, uh, let's say, not in abundant amount, so the local anesthetic will not be metabolized and this, it would produce toxicity, okay? Now, Sana, your point. Allergic reaction often due to PABA byproduct, okay? So basically there is a byproduct which is named, which is called PABA, right? I think I did not insert this slide on the right space. Wait, uh, that was a slide which I, could not mention, you know, earlier. So I was just inserting right now. Wait a minute, let me insert it very quickly. Okay, yeah, guys, okay. So for PABA, PABA full form is paramine benzoic acid, okay? And it causes curve painful erections, rear autoimmune disorder, skin blisters, hardening of the skin and connective tissue, and many other conditions, right? So basically the allergic reactions that you see after having local anesthetics, okay, that is due to PABA. Okay, all right. Then we have amide local anesthetics. And as we have already discussed, they're metabolized by liver, okay? 
so carboxyl esterases and p450 system and dealkylation so hepatic diseases may slow clearance and lead to toxicity one other thing associated with amide um, local anesthetic is meth hemoglobinemia if you remember guys do you remember what is meth uh, meth hemoglobin uh, meth hemoglobinemia do you remember yes yes ma'am ye jo hai humne padha tha kaun se chapter mein चैप्टर में पढ़ा था इसमें जो हमारा जो हीमोग्लोबिन हो जाता है वो एब नॉर्मली जो है हमारी बॉडी में प्रोड्यूस होने लग जाता है जिसकी वजह से जो है हमारा जो ये नाइट्रेट्स का एडवर्स इफेक्ट है और मिथोबेबिया में सिंपल ये होता है कि जो हमारा हीमोग्लोबिन होता है वो एब नॉर्मली प्रोड्यूस होने लग जाता है एफ ई प्लस टू जो है एफ ई प्लस थ्री में कन्वर्ट हो जाता है so जो एफ ई टू प्लस है When it's getting converted to Fe3 plus, तो कलर क्या हो जाता है हीमोग्लोबिन का ब्लू कलर हो जाता है ठीक है सो द इंटायर हीमो द ब्लड गेट्स ब्लू इन कलर ओके सो एंड दिस मिथ हेमोग्लोबिनीमिया इज एसोसिएटेड विद दीज टू ड्रग्स ओके सो दिस इज Prelocaine and lidocaine, which is very commonly used. Okay, and the treatment for this condition is uh, methylene blue. Okay, allergic reactions are rare when we talk about amide local anesthetics. Mess with the puffer, you gonna suffer. Okay, now this is a fish, right? Obviously, you can see. All right, and you know what it does? <laughs> this fish is. Oh my God! When I studied about it, it was very. Uh, what can I talk? Okay, so what exactly it does is this? It produces a toxin. Okay, now what the toxin does is, imagine guys, if you remember the action of anesthesia, what did we study? We studied that it would go inside the neuron and then block the, uh, uh and then block the receptor from inside. Right, guys. but here do you know what happens is that it would block from outside okay and obviously when the channel is blocked sodium will not go inside action potential will not be generated and as a result uh, uh, you know the person would start to get uh, um uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the person would start to feel intense numbness right and then we would have to take the person to hospital even because the um, uh, this though this is reversible but it's not um, something to take very casually okay so what exactly are we talking about here is we are talking about sodium channel toxins okay so for sodium channel toxins we want to avoid tetro uh, wait a minute tetrodotoxin okay and then we want to avoid sexy toxin right so this comes from puffer fish which, which i just showed to you okay and this comes from the algae toxin which is, which is in red tide let me show you this is the red tide okay all right uh so uh, both of these would block activated sodium channels decrease sodium influx and obviously no action potential so you know the effects right okay the next sodium channel toxins are uh wait a minute i've got a message from you yeah where there one more anesthesia regional is it more allergic i mean it is not explained here so we need no need to study that uh okay sana i am not getting what you're saying okay but there one more anesthesia regional uh, i the regional is local okay so now talk to me after the class when i've shut down the recording about it okay uh, because uh, i don't know what you're talking about okay even in lipin court and so many other books that i have which i used to uh, make your lectures um, i find no where one more um, you know a class class of anesthesia but if you're talking about it you can even send me some 
um, work about it and um, maybe I can produce one more lecture on it. Okay. All right. Now, uh, guys, here in the uh, sodium channel toxins, we have sigua toxin and then we have uh, betracho toxin. Okay. This comes from frogs. This comes from exotic fish. Okay. So what do they do is they bind to activated sodium channels, cause inactivation, and then they prolong so, uh, sodium influx. And you know what will happen, right? Okay. Uh, one thing we need to be sure is that we should always measure blood pressure before giving anesthesia, right? Because as we say that we are going to put the body into a depressive state, even though it's locally, right? So we need to know about, uh, you know, uh, the cardiac output, right? And uh, we don't want to depress the person even more, right? So we should always, always, always make it sure that we are taking blood pressure. All right. The second thing is, uh, you see here, okay, this is, these are the bubbles, all right? I, I hope you can spot these bubbles, okay? So this procedure is called aspiration. I'm sure after the class, when you study from your book, especially the book I refer is Lippincott. Uh, so from the book, when you study, so he, there you would study the term, which is called aspirate. They would say always aspirate, always aspirate. Now, what exactly is this aspirate? Aspirate is this, that let's say you have the syringe, okay? And if you want to inject it somewhere, first of all, you push it a bit back, okay? And if blood comes in the syringe instead of bubbles, do not inject, all right? And if bubbles comes up, so it means that it's good to go and you can inject. And why is this? Because of the reason that here we are giving it in the tendons, okay? Um, here, the, this is not intravenous injection, okay? Guys, here, uh, this local anesthetic, we are giving in specific parts, specific tendons, specific muscles, right? So we don't want the blood to enter uh, within the syringe, okay? So we want the tendon to be the site of, uh, you know, injection, okay? So... Uh, when you study in from your book, so you'll find this word aspirate, A-S-P-I-R-A-T-E, okay? So this aspirate means that you put the needle of the syringe uh, on the site of uh, administration, you pull the, uh, you pull, pull the plunger a bit back. If bubbles are coming up, that means it's good to go and uh, yes, this is a site of injection. So it's like that, okay? All right. This is a slide which I have obviously taken from Lippincott, as you all can see. Um, and I took it because I love how beautifully they have summarized the entire thing. Um, we have talked about all of these in deep detail. So I'm sure uh, this, um, this part of the slide, you would just pause, copy it in your register somewhere and just memorize it, okay? All right. The second thing is, Oh, we did not discuss this thing, that the stability in solution, like this is uh, sensitive, the ester, and this is not, okay? I think rest we have talked, okay. Uh, apart from that, guys, uh, look here, the potency, uh, potent are tetrakin, tetrakin, and then we have bupivacin, and then rupivacin, okay, and the other thing which, which we need to uh, have in our mind is obviously the duration of action, right? So this is one summary slide which I, I expect you all to memorize, right? The clinical uses of local anesthetic is obviously local infiltration, topical anesthesia, peripheral nerve block, uh, neuraxial anesthesia, arrhythma treatment. Yes, sometimes arrhythma is treated by it. Pain management. And that is it, everybody. Thank you so much.